Hello, welcome to part 9 of our lesson series on creating custom e-commerce website systems. For those having script troubles, I would like to mention once again that my working code will be available for download right when I finish this series of videos. But in the meantime, I will be sure that all code is on screen and discussed. And it helps if you go full screen and watch the video in 720 HD format if you'd like to see the code syntax real sharp. Alrighty, before we program this PHP shopping cart from scratch, we have to offer a crash course in arrays. If you know your array types already, you can skip ahead. And if you want a little bit more information on PHP arrays, you can go to developphp.com to the Learn PHP section. And down here, you have Working with Arrays in PHP. And I go over all the basics there. How to assemble them, how to get data out of them, and things like that. Okay, so there's a few different array types that a programmer can choose to pull out of his arsenal when programming things from scratch to take care of any custom needs he or she may have. So you have the basic array, associative array, and multi-dimensional array. Now the basic array is very simple. It's just a group of items, and that can be as many items as you like, or as few as you like. And it can also be numbers in there, or any kind of characters really. But if I wanted numbers, say 3, 7, 2, I can have a whole group of numbers in there if I wanted. And then we have an associative array, which is an array that allows you to assign what your key and value pairs are going to be. You can assign distinctive key names. So in this array, you're going to have key of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. By default, it'll just have keys of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And this one, the key will be item ID, and its value will be 3. This key will be quantity, and its value will be 2. So an associative array lets you assign distinctive key names and values. So it's key value pairs. Now a multi-dimensional array is simply a group of arrays all packed into one larger array container. You may want to assign special key value pairs inside of your array for each item. So basically all a multi-dimensional array is is a bunch of arrays packed into a larger array container. So your multi-dimensional array just think of as an, an array container that holds multiple arrays. But this is how our store is going to be laid out. Exactly like this multi-dimensional array. We're going to use this exact multi-dimensional array. So instead of that being milk, it'll be hat and jeans and shirts or whatever. But we're going to have the item ID and the quantity for that item all within its own little array. And it's going to be packed in with other array items, however many items they put into their cart. If they only put one item in their cart, we'll only have one item in our multi-dimensional array. In this example here, they would have three items in their cart. And the fact that we're going to use the item ID means we don't need to really gather the price or any other details about the item until we're ready to display it or tally things up for the cart total. Okay, so I'm going to go into Dreamweaver, which is my HTML editor that I'm working in. You can be a notepad, plus plus, whatever you want. Open up cart.php. I'm also going to open up product.php and I'm going to open template header. I'm going to show you what I put in here. Remember in our header we had a two column top. In the right column all I did was make sure the horizontal alignment was to the right down here and I put in a link to cart.php and you can see it's very simply just a link to cart.php and I changed the wording on my my links up top I put mid dots in between so you give me a little dot okay and I'm gonna close template header make sure I save it and close it and I'm going to FTP that up to the soiva and then product I'm gonna go into design view right where it says add to cart right there static text I'm just going to replace that static text this P tag I'm going to replace with this. And I'm going to make sure I zoom in on that so you guys can see it real well. 
And all I did was simply replace that with a very simple form. The form's name and ID is form1. The method is post. The action is cart.php. Now the variable that it's going to send is going to be a hidden type variable. The name of that variable is PID, short for product ID. So its name and ID is set as PID, short for product ID. The value is this ID for this product. Because we're on the product.php page. But that's what that variable is going to be set as. So your cart.php page, which we haven't even started to assemble yet, is going to know which variable to scoop up, the variable named PID. So that way the cart knows what item from the inventory to add into the shopping cart. And then we simply have a submit button with any value you want to put on it. And you can make this a custom button if you want. I'm just using a stock HTML button. And you close the form tag. Very simple. So that's all you need on the product.php page to usher people to the cart with this item. And in the cart is where we're going to take care of quantity. So I'm going to FTP that up to the site now. Product.php, I can close that. Now this cart.php is what we're going to work on next. Okay, so inside of cart.php, I'm going to highlight the HTML closing tag all the way up to title tag there. I'm going to pop in this code to replace it. And don't let me lose you now. I'm going to zoom in on that real good so you can see. And if you want to type it in, you can just pause and full screen. Make sure it's on HD and you'll see all the characters right there real clear. So for now, that's all we're going to have in the HTML part. Now let me explain it to you real quick. We have basically what's going on in the other pages where we have a main div holding in everything on the page centered and then we're including the template header file then we have our div page content and inside of that one I put a new div that has a style of margin 24 pixels just to get everything off the edges and text align to the left that way everything won't be centered inside of it then I'm echoing out the cart output which is going to be built above this doc type tag in PHP block that we're going to create. And then under out under the cart output you can have a click here to empty your cart button or link. I just have a very simple link. And you may even want to choose after we mess around with making our cart output, if you notice that there are no items in the cart, you may not even want to render a link or a button to empty the cart unless you have at least one or more items in it. So it's up to you. Mine my link is going to show no matter what. But when we get into the cart output logic, I'm going to show you how to uh, evaluate things. And you'll be able to create links in certain programming areas of the script that you want to render out down here on the page. Then after that, we got a break tag. Then those divs close, and we have our template footer. OK, OK. All right, now just to stay cool and make sure nobody can tell me that they have errors, we're going to open up product and I'm going to grab a little piece of script for error reporting. I'm going to put that right above our doc type ph in cart.php. So if you open that code up you'll see it says error reporting e underscore all any underscore set is display errors with a value of one. That will force errors to show on the page no matter what your PHP any file is set like on your server. And I've said that like five times throughout this lesson now, and so that'll be the last time I say that. Just throw it on all your scripts. Anything with a .php that's in your directory, have this in it. It won't hurt. It won't hurt, and you'll know for sure if you have any errors. All right, let me just collapse that. Actually, right here above that, let's type in session start. Now, the reason why I'm typing in session start, if you don't know what session start is all about, that's a function that will allow you to enable session cookie file use on the page. So you can gather variables from people's session cookie files that are stored in their browser, which is going to be a pretty major part of the little system here for the cart. We're going to use session cookies because we want the cart to remember what the person has put in it, no matter where they go on our site. And maybe even if they jump to Google or YouTube real quick or wherever, as long as they're in the same browsing session, they come back, it should still be available unless their session is timed out. Using session type cookie files is a good way to have things remembered. And if you want them to be remembered 
for longer and session not expire at all, you can use actual cookies in PHP. You can establish an actual cookie file and it won't expire. You can make it stay active for a month if you want. You can set them to stay stay active for six months if you want. As long as you know, as long as the person's accepting cookies in their browser from your site. Cookie files to be made in their browser from your site, then you can you can set cookies for whatever you want. And it's a way to have persistent data and a developed PHP. Let's see, I got a little lesson about it in the learn PHP section down in the examples I think registering PHP session variables and there and that's how easy it is to make session variables and it's basically a little tiny cookie file that goes in the person's browser file storage and it's made for this purpose so you can have persistent data from page to page throughout your domain but when people shut their browser down then the session variable will be destroyed if you use actual cookies in PHP which we use for like social networks and things like that logging logging in type mechanisms to have things remember people even if they shut their browser down and come back a week later you can use something like that for your card if you like but you sometimes might want to tell people to make sure their cookies are enabled or whatever let's put a comment right here to ourselves start session first thing in script alright now I'm gonna collapse that all up so that's the error reporting and the session tell you what I'll collapse these up now I'm gonna put in a new PHP block now we have to grab the variable that's coming in from the product page through that form remember we just put that form into the product page so when it's clicked on it's gonna send it to cart.php it's gonna send the user to cart.php and the hidden variable that's gonna be sent with that request is going to be PID, short for product ID. Alright, so to access that variable, let's pop in this code. Let's close that off. If is set the posted variable of PID, then this local PHP PID variable is going to be equal to whatever that variable is coming in, whatever item they clicked on to add to cart this variable here is going to hold that value. Oh, and by the way, there was somebody asking about if I could show how to let somebody pick sizes if you're selling clothing or something like that. And I'll give you a little hint. This form where this hidden variable is and the submit button, in this very form you can add a couple of more fields for whatever you want, whatever options you want. So you can put a little pull down that has large, medium, extra large, whatever, small, and then uh, you can have radio buttons to do it with or whatever you want you just have to know how to work with HTML forms pretty good if you want to set something like that up but as so many stores are so diverse in what they sell like some stores sell CDs some stores sell you know, computer equipment some stores sell clothing it's hard to make a tutorial that will show everybody what they need to know about everything you know get good at making HTML forms and processing them with PHP and you'll have it all set up whatever you need but those variables can carry across just like I carried across this one here and they just wouldn't be hidden variables they would be actual fields like drop downs or radio buttons whatever you want to make and I'll give you a couple of hints when we're building the shopping cart array about how you may insert more options within your associative arrays that are part of your multi-dimensional array. Okay, sorry about that. Let's get back on track here. So we got the posted variable that is the item ID or the product ID in our store that the person's trying to add to the cart. So there it is, PID right there. So the next line, let's put ourselves a little comment. If the cart session variable is not set or cart array is empty. So we need a little if condition that we can translate this English sentence into code and I just happen to have that ready to go so in this if condition let me just close this off put an else statement there close that off too
So if the cart session variable is not set or the cart array is empty, we want a certain block of code to run right here or a certain bit of code. Else, if it is already set and it has more than one item in it, we want this code right here to run in this area. You got it? Okay. So let's check out this code real good. If is not, remember the exclamation point means is not. If is not set, the cart array session variable, or you see these two pipes, two pipe characters next to each other there represent an or in this expression. So if is not set, the session cart array, or when you count the session card array, if that is less than one, I know that's hard to understand, but that's basically, basically this line of code is saying exactly this. This is the English translation, or the layman's translation, of what this line of code right here is doing. So if the card session variable is not set, we check that right here, or cart array is empty. That means the cart array session is set for the person but maybe they emptied it because on this side of the of the evaluation we're using the count function on this array. So you can count any array that you have using this count function. And that'll let you know the exact number of array items that are in that array and we're evaluating to see if that is less than one. So basically if there's no items in a cart or if the card array session isn't set yet, we're going to run this code right here. Else, there's already items in the cart, and we're going to run this code here. Okay, so in the section where it says run if the card is empty or not set, that's the line of code you want right there. Now, what this is, is this is our multi dimensional array. We're actually establishing the cart session variable right here. And remember, we're putting the cart the whole multi-dimensional array into a session variable that way it remembers so if the person goes from this page to that page doing various shopping here and there all over our site or if they happen to go from this site to that site as long as they're in the same browser session they come back to our site their their cart items will still be in session as long as the session hasn't expired yet either which you can use actual PHP cookies if you use actual cookie files, then they have more persistence to them. Okay? So cookie files are more persistent in the fact that if a user closes the browser down, or if they take two hours and come back to your site, or if they close the browser down and they come back next week to your site on their computer, their cart would still be intact if you use actual cookies. But we're going to use session cookies, which just work for one browser session. If the person closes their browser, they open it up and come back to the, it'll be empty. So if you want to implement actual cookies on yours, just look into how to create PHP cookies, the actual cookie files, instead of using these session cookie files. Alright, so basically what I'm doing here is what we had in that illustration. This multi-dimensional array is what I'm setting up. See item ID, quantity. I can have as many associative arrays that I want packed into my multi-dimensional array. So you can see in this cart session variable here, we're packing in an array. That's a multi-dimensional array. Within that multi-dimensional array, you have as many basic or associative arrays as you want. And they can be mixed arrays. So really, it's your imagination would be the only limit to what you can do with your custom cart and the uh, let's say I wanted to add another option let's say I wanted the key to be size and the value would be some dynamic variable that they sent through the form remember just as simple as that then you would have your size in on each one too but I'm going to leave that up to your beautiful minds to figure out, experiment with. For my array, it's going to be associative arrays with nothing but the item ID in the database and the quantity, however many they want. And like I said, if they want to put 
another one of this same item if they press add to cart again I'm not going to alert them that they've put the same item in I'm just going to make the quantity 2 because of course if they have one in their cart already and they're putting another one in that means they want another so I'm going to make it 2 now keep in mind the only reason we're able to use this code in this fashion like this like we are establishing the cart array is because we know that the cart array session is not set yet or the cart array has less than one item in it that means it has zero items so we can treat it as empty or not set and just re-establish the whole thing by putting the item they choose in it and only that item will be in the cart so really you could just run this one line which this line doesn't show you how to push new items into the array I'm gonna to get to that in just a second and that happens down here in this part of the code is where you check to see if that item is already in and if it's already in the cart you just want to up the quantity if that item is not in the cart yet and it's a new unique item going in the cart then you want to push it into the array I'm going to show you man don't you worry alright so I'm gonna leave it dangling right here and continue in part 10 because I think the carts gonna be programmatically the most complex thing but anyway I'll see you in part 10 where we'll resume right where we left off right here on the cart.php page so you can see we have our session variable for the cart array being established when we know that there's no items in it yet or it hasn't been set and we're popping in the item dynamically that they choose from our store but remember here is where we're going to code to see if that item is already in the array if it is we up the quantity to add one to it and if the item is not in the array then we're going to push it in okay so stay tuned I'll see you part 10 bye bye